cool like dry fits against the truth. You will lose nothing you can do about it. This is an organization, the argument's not wasting our dedicated time. Brothers want us to speak Hebrew, so say that in Hebrew. Cause let me stop. Hey, purple on boots shining and we deep. Lazy kid. What's that? Right. We get everything. The only difference is guess what? Now you don't even know you're a slave. Uh, That's the only difference. And you ain't got no shackles literally on you no more. They on your brain. That's right. Because guess what? Since they took them shackles off, did we run anymore? We ain't running no more, Paul. We home. Hey, this is home. Master got we Master sick. We sick, Paul. We got a nice house, don't we, Master? Look what we live in. Look what Master live in. Look at our reality. Master will go get high in a mansion on some coke. Right. And go to sleep in a jacuzzi that's the same size as that damn store. Right. You will come out here and smoke PCP and lay on the curves with the same curve that people piss on. Right. Yeah. You ain't got nothing. We don't have not nothing, Paul. This is your reality. Not just your history. This is your reality. You still living in slave quarters. Look at this, Paul. Paul, don't let them distract you, Paul. Go to Acts 3.19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. What must they do? Repent ye therefore, and be converted, Read. that your sins may be blotted out. You, you repent that you be converted, meaning your mind is changed. Right. Meaning you no longer see yourself as an African American. Right. Meaning you no longer see yourself in your community as a way of life. You start opening your eyes to everything that's going on around you. The oppressive state, not only of itself, but your brothers, upsets you. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, and then we're going to go right back to Acts. This is not, this lifestyle shouldn't make you feel good inside. You shouldn't get butterflies. Oh, guess what? When you was day to day, when you you struggling to come up with that money to pay that rent, that reality is real. But then when that money flow through, you good. Ain't no problems now. And you know what? I got so much money, I'm going to splurge. I'm going to go out a little bit, give me them joys I've been wanting. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I feel generous. I'm going to get my baby some too, get them some clothes, because yeah. I want my children to look fresh. When we're young, our goals in life is that our children dress fly. Nice. We say stuff like, you know what? When I have kids, they never going to have to go through what I had to go right. through. Right. they going to dress in all polo. That's our goals. Bring it out. Our goals is to make a lot of money. And then we see our brothers and sisters that's famous already. And they just as depressed as we are out here in the ghetto. That's right. To show you that it don't matter what you do or what you gain, you are never going to grow outside of your people. Right. You are a nigga when you broke and only had a dime, you a nigga with a million. Bring it right. But this is what I'm telling you. Paul, you must repent and be converted. Right. You don't even know what it means to repent, Paul. What does it mean to repent? I gave you the keys to life, and you don't even know how to use it. That's why you need to be right here. That's right. Don't buy. Read that. What I gave you, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7? Yes, sir. I Read that. It. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. Bring it out. Truly oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Sister, you walked up just in time. I got a verse for you. You heard what the brother said, or you were just walking up? You weren't paying that much attention? I was just How old are you? Fifteen. Fifteen? Okay. What's your name? Alea. Okay. Alea. Alea? Watch this. I want you to tell me what this scripture means. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. Uh -huh. Truly oppression maketh a wise man mad. What does that mean? Let's break it down. What is oppression? Person? Yes. I think it's something. I think it's something. That's okay. No, no, that's okay. I'm about to make it real simple. Bring it out. Look around. Hmm. What's your name again? Alea. Alea. Alea, look around. I want you to do a full 360. Look around. You see this trash in the streets? You see this brother laid out on the ground right now? You see this store and our way our homes are? This is oppression. That's right. This is oppression. 
the, the sad and true thing about it is, guess what? You 15, right? My brother just walked up. How old are you? I'm a 61. You 61. When you was 15, did our neighborhoods look like this? No. Was we living in the ghettos? No. We wasn't? Yeah, we was. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, right. Was drugs in our neighborhoods? Yeah. Was the cops shooting us down in the streets? No. The, the cops wasn't shooting us down in the streets? No. Not what happened? The cops wasn't oppressing us in the streets? Well, they were doing a little bit something different than that. What about the Jim Crow era? Yeah, well. What about Rodney King? Right, right, right. So right. it was happening, right? Right, and, and, and not in the, the streets where I came from, but it was happening. It was still happening. It that's my thing. Whenever, that's what I'm going to just let y'all know. Whenever I speak, I always speak nation. I don't speak okay. self. Right. Because right. guess what? You can say, I live good, shit. Right. I, don't, I don't even live out here. Right. I'm not laid out on the street strung out right now like this, brother, right. but that's your people. Right. When those cops come through here, when they see him, they see you. Right. You see what I'm saying? So my point is, guess what? Alea, when, what's your name? I'm Franklin. When Franklin was 15, this was still a reality. This is oppression. Slavery, it, this was a reality. Do you see what I'm showing you? The crazy stuff is, guess what? When our forefathers got brought here, they knew what they got taken from. We were raised as slaves. We are born slaves. We don't know what freedom look like. Because all we know is oppression. All we know is slavery. All we know is being overran and controlled by another nation. We don't know nothing else. At one point, you might not even learn about slavery. Do they teach y'all that in, church, in school still? They still teach y'all about the slave trade? That we came over here on cargo slave ships? You see what I'm saying? And the schools where my children was going, mm -hmm. they stopped teaching that. Dang. They said, that's hatred. Why would we want to bring up old things like that? That's in the past. Why we want to root up that kind of spirit in these children to think about stuff like that that was so traumatic. But remember 9-11. Don't forget about that, though. Right. Don't forget about that. Don't forget about 9-11. Okay, and the Holocaust. Don't forget about that. But slavery, stop. That's Look, that's back in the day. But guess what? This is the truth. This is the reality. Your history is relevant, but to the other nation, it's not. Right. Why are you worried about that? Frederick, was you on them slave ships? That's what they tell you. Alea, was you on them slave ships? That's what they tell you, but guess what? That's a lie, Alea. You were. That's right. You were on them slave ships. Christopher Columbus did come and slaughter your brothers and sisters. Right. Because right. guess what? You think your brothers and sisters are just African Americans. Bring it up. Everybody on this chart is of your people. That's right. All they did was gave us different names so you believe you are different people. Right. Right. But you are the same. But watch this. Let's get back to the verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. No. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. So when you see this, Alea and Frederick, when you see our brothers like this, when you see the filth that's in our streets, when you see the living situations that we live in, do you stay in a, a, a two-parent household or a single-parent household? You stay in a single-parent household, which is just your mother? That is oppression. Right. right. The Bible says that oppression makes so, a man that has wisdom, oppression makes him upset. Yes. Right. It makes him mad. Do your mom work hard to make sure you have what you need? Do she struggle to make sure you have what you need? Does that upset you? That's oppression. That's a sign of wisdom, sister. That's a sign of wisdom. But watch this. This is the, this is the next part. Watch this. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. And a gift destroyeth the heart. It says, and a gift destroyed the heart. So guess what? They'll leave you in this oppressive state and they give you a stimulus check. Yeah. I got my stimulus check. That's how you feel when that money come in. And you be looking at, hey, my, what my 1400 Because I heard you got 14 for me too. Right, right. You forget about this. Then this don't make no sense no more. I didn't even notice that. I didn't, damn, trash. I didn't even know we had. This brother, I thought he was just, I thought he was taking a nap. I thought it was all right. Right, right, right. Right? 15, right? Do you have a boyfriend? All oh, praise. Somebody clap it up for that sister. There's no such thing as boyfriend and girlfriend That's in the right. Bible. That's right. 
And let me show you why it's important, because you are a living product of that law being broken. Mm -hmm. Your mother is the only one that's in the household. You know your father? You know him. But he just doesn't stay with your mother. Was they married? And they separated. That is also not in the Bible. The only way a man is to separate from his wife is if she goes out and sleeps around on him. Right. Yeah. But guess what? You know why these laws are instituted? Because that is a chain reaction. It's a ripple effect. Because now you have to suffer from not something that your parents had happen. Now you suffer from that. Now you don't have a father in the household that can protect you from these brothers out here in these streets. Right. Bring it out. Do you know that you are part of the greatest nation of people to ever be created? Bring it yes. out. And the Bible says it. Did you know that? Watch this. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Get out. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. My brother Frederick, this is for you too. And what's my brother's name right here? What's up, big bro? Kenneth. Kenneth? Kenneth, this is for you. And for all the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that dwell in this place. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Bring it out. For thou art in the holy people unto the Lord thy God. Right off the rip, he made a separation. He said, you're holy, meaning you are separate. You are a separate people. Because out of all 18 of these nations that dwell on this earth today, God chose you. Yes. You are not African Americans. You are not blacks. You are the Israelites that the Bible speak of. Yes. Your, nation, your nationality is an Israelite. Watch this. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. The Lord chose you to be special for himself and himself only. He chose you brothers to be special. He chose the brothers and sisters in this community to be special for himself. Right, right. And guess what? That brother as well. He chose him to be special. Right, right. Watch this. Above all people. Hold on, because when my brother Frederick was young, we was fighting for equality, right? And now that my sister Alea is 15, we still march the streets Thanks. and fight for equality. Thanks. From the moment that we came out of slavery till today, we still fighting just to be equal with the people that rule over us. But what did the Bible say we are? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You mean not just all people in Houston? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The entire earth. Every, with a, with a F, earth. The whole earth. Bring it up. You are above, Alea. You are above all people on the face of the earth. That's right. You shouldn't carry yourself like everybody else on this earth. Right. Nobody else can mimic that wool that's on your hair that God said is perfect. You don't need a perm that guy. You don't need to put no weave in it. Right. That right there is beautiful in the eyes of the Most High. Right. Because he said, you know what? That's the same hair that I got on my head. Bring it out. I gave you, I made you in the sight of perfection. Bring For it my, I am perfect, you are perfect. Right. Right. And you can continue to reach for perfection by keeping the commandments of the Most High God. That's right. But first, I have to open your eyes. First, I have to show you who you are. Bring it out. I got to bring the real. Guess what? I got to take you out of the matrix. Right. That's right. Because now everything looked good. It was normal. But I'm showing you how crazy and disgusting your environment is. Right. I'm showing you the present state that your people and they're not even supposed to be in right now. Man. Using the Bible. The same Bible that they hold in the church and never read nothing out of it. Right. But like this, the, 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 the Edomite white lady was here earlier saying, uh -huh. why y'all picking all, y'all just pick scriptures. Y'all just want to talk those scriptures. Why you don't pick the scriptures I want to hear about right. that talks about unity and she don't even know that's not even talking about her. That's right. That's right. This Bible is for you. It's not for everybody. Right. This Bible is not all inclusive. This Bible was written by Israelites for Israelites. That's right. That's right. If they don't, if these people don't abide in these curses in Deuteronomy 28, they are not your people. That's right. They are not your friends because your friends don't put you into captivity. Right. Your friends, guess what? You go to school, 
there's white teachers there too, right? And they nice. They seem kind and, and, and kind to you and nice. But guess what? When you get off that bus, you come here. When they go home, they go to their neighborhoods that don't look nothing like this. That's right. Their children, they good. They don't be nice to you for that moment. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Of course they nice to you because you learning my doctrines. Did you know? Now watch this. I'm about to blow your mind. Did you know that it's a sin for women to wear pants? Bring it out. Look at your eyes. I just blew your mind, huh? God said that is a sin. Because guess what? I proved to you in the Bible that you're above all people on the face of the earth. You are a special and royal people. You are a princess on the earth. Yes, right. In your true nature, under these law, statutes, commandments, the Most High God said your feet wouldn't even touch the ground. That's right. But guess what? Your other nations tell you, wear them pants. And then look, rub the knee out. Let a little skin show. But the Bible says that you are a royal bloodline. Right. How many queens, how many princesses you know that wear pants? You don't see them. When you watch the movie The Princess and the Frog, was she wearing pants? When she was royal, when, you, when women get married, do they wear pants? When you go to proms, do you wear pants? You wear dresses. You wear gowns. You wear these ball gowns to make you feel special and beautiful. The Most High God said, I created a dress code for you to always feel special and beautiful. Let me show you. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Why? For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. As long as our sisters remain in pants and our brothers dress like women. I know you've seen it. You've seen brothers that dress themselves like women. He said you are an abomination. That is something the Most High hates. Right. He hates that thing, Alea. Because guess what? I can. You are young. You are young right now. You haven't been, you haven't, you never had a boyfriend? Mm, you had one, right? That's not good, yeah. Alea. But guess what? You are protected under these law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Yes. And you have men that protect our sisters. Right. We won't let no any brother come over and think he's just going to get with you. Right. Because first of all, you're going to be molded into a woman of Israel. That's right. A daughter of Sarah. You're going to be trained and taught by women that's been doing it for a while. Right. Right. And they're going to show you and transform your mind to see the true nature of your own. Right. They're going to show you what it feels like to be a woman. Uh -huh. To be feminine. Right. To love yourself and your hair. That's right. They're going to teach you these things. And no man is supposed to touch you until you want one of meritable age. That's right. Which means you are 20. You're 20 years old. And you have your stuff together because guess what? Your father's not in the household, right? But you still know your father. Your father, under these law, statutes, and commandments, will protect you as well. Right. Because you would have, the brother that wants to marry my daughter, when the brother thinks that he wants to marry my daughter, he have to come be proven not only by her, but by me as well. That's right. Because I'm not letting just anybody. Did you know that you were created to only be with one man? That's right. Right. Do you, let me ask you a question. Do you want to get pregnant one day and be left on your own to raise the child? Mm. Do you want a man to come and lay with you and then leave you and go lay with some other sisters? Dang. You don't want that. Thanks. Right now, you're dealing with logic. At the age you are right now, you're dealing with logic. But when you become tainted with the ways of Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion, right. bring it up. Because this is the, I, the images that our sisters idolize today because those sisters look like they made it to a successful level. But all they do is objectify themselves and teach our sisters to objectify themselves as well. By saying, guess what? Use your body to get what you want. And that's the wrong message. Because everything that I asked you that you said you didn't want, that's what's going to happen to you if you follow that path. Right. right. Watch this. I seen you had Timothy. Yeah, I have 1 Timothy 2 and 9, but then I have. Go back to that. Go to 1 Timothy 2 and 9. Because I want you to take these things and bring it back to your mom and show her and then even ask if you can come convocate and fellowship she have to come with you tell her to come convocate and fellowship with you because guess what this is the path you need that's right, that's right. and I'm not talking about a Christian church because that's not what we about 
We about God's laws. We about identity of self. We about building our men up, our brother, our young men to be men. Because men ain't being men. There's no men today. Out there, there's no men. There's no men. Bring it up. Nobody's teaching them to be men. The men don't even want to be men. Right. Nobody want to nobody want to fight for the nation of their people no more. Right. When we come out here and talk, they look at us like we're crazy. But right. guess what? We're doing the same thing that Malcolm X did. We're doing those things today. Yeah. Marcus right. Garvey. Bring it out. Bring it out. The ones that stood up for their people. Bring it out. Huey P. Newton. Right. This is your true revolutionary men you see before That's you today. Right. We come out here for you. We put our lives on the line for you. That's right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.